we're David and Alexis with Financial Phoenix. Hi. Uh, today we're here to talk about uh, how you can find hidden value throughout your house by decluttering and simplifying your lifestyle. Uh, we're going to Marie Kondo all over the place and we're going to find some, some extra hidden cash. Uh, we're definitely gonna, not going to make a living at this, but this is an easy way to find some cash in a hurry, quick, just around your house um, with a couple of different methods that are really easy to follow. Keep in mind, uh, if you are interested in couponing at all and you watch my couponing videos, be sure to watch this week because we have a couple of coupon insert giveaways that we're going to be doing in our coupon video this week. Um, kind of a lot of them, if uh, I can be really honest with you. Uh, so we're going to be sending those out for free if you are watching that video. So make sure you check back in for that. Let's get started. Shut up and sit down. I like to set a timer when I'm starting a project like this. Oh my gosh, guys, look, look at that. That is incredible. And here, this is what you can see here. These are really deep drawers. So this is a really tough thing for me to organize. I just can never find a good use for that. So um, anyway, we're going to, we're going to work on it today and try and come up with some value here, but also really do what we need to do, which is declutter this drawer because this drawer is crazy right now. Um, so I like to set a timer and uh, make a very small and achievable goal because organization can be very daunting. So uh, today my goal is to just organize two drawers, that's it, no more, no less, um, and just see if I can pull out some extra cash with things that are sellable. So um, I put this on top because this was, I found this this morning and that's what kind of inspired this uh, video. But this was actually buried down in here. This is a Food Network serving fork and spoon set. And you can see it's still in the package. I'm so embarrassed by this. Look. And it says, dish it up and what's cooking. And it's super cute. And you know what? I'm just betting that you guys have something in your drawer, something in your cabinets, your linen closet, wherever, that is still in the package like this that you've never opened. Maybe it was a gift and you've just not found a use for it, but um, I'm just going to, I'm going to scan this and see what it's worth. You know, maybe it's worth putting it in a shipment to Amazon FBA. Maybe it's worth a YouTube or YouTube. <laughs> maybe it's worth an eBay uh sell i don't know maybe this is just a thing that i can sell locally but it's got a barcode that's scannable um and this is the embarrassing part i have moved this sucker three times i have lived in three different houses with this put it in my kitchen every single time and i have never used this or taken it out of the package so this needs to go i don't know what do you guys think about this item these are those little popsicle makers that you can um, make fresh popsicles with your kids. Uh, they have little handles that go inside so you can hold the popsicles once they're done. But honestly, we don't ever use it. I think we've used it once since we bought it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it would sell for a lot, but I also know that it's taken up space and we really don't need it. This is one of those items when you're trying to become a minimalist that, you know, why? You just buy popsicles. So, this is going to be one of those items that's going to be hard for me to part with. This is going to be a tough one. Um, I had this dream of making my own homemade ravioli. Um, there's another one in here too. Ah, see, it's caught on everything. Yeah, so I had a dream of making my own homemade ravioli and cutting them out with these awesome cutters. And so uh, David, Mr. Financial Phoenix, bought these for me for Christmas, and I tried them once, and I am not pasta adept. Um, yeah, I need a pasta roller to roll them out thin enough before I can really make use of these. And this is something to talk about too when you're organizing. Does this fit? who I am or who I envision myself to be. I think that's why a lot of people get sidetracked when they're organizing and a lot of reasons why we hold on to things because we like the image of ourself 
in our mind that still goes to the gym or that still tries to make homemade ravioli. You know, we like the image of ourselves still working on those things. Um, with finding value around the house is with video games. Um, if you're not a traditional gamer and you don't, you know, regularly sell your stuff back to GameStop in return for store credit. Don't ever do that. Don't do it. It's not. What you definitely want to do is take time looking through your game collections, especially if they're just family games, maybe your kids don't play anymore. Have them help you sort through stuff that, you know, hasn't been played in a while. If it's collecting dust on the shelf, if it hasn't, you know, a good way to do that is to look through all your games, the ones that you're questioning whether or not you'll use, uh, open them up and leave the cases on the shelf sitting open and then close each case as it gets used. And if in like a month, six months, whatever, you still have cases sitting open that haven't been played, then those are definitely ones that you wanna get rid of. So uh, we just pulled these out for our yard sale today. What do you got there? Uh, so this is Lego City Undercover for 3DS, Nintendo 3DS. Um, Selling it used on Amazon FBA. That way I can just put it in a box and send it out. Uh, to give us about $7 profit. It's more than GameStop would give us. And it's more than I can realistically price it at in our garage sale. So, you know, easy money on that. What are uh, games like to ship? Uh, well, I mean, a single game wouldn't be very much. But the point is, this is going FBA so that you can ship a whole box of things. Right, but even um, if someone wanted to sell them on eBay. Yeah, if you want to sell it on eBay, you can put it in a, a, a padded envelope and send it by what they call media mail. Media mail is actually a flat rate service that the U.S. Postal Service provides. It has to be a book or a DVD or something like that, some kind of media, as the name suggests. And if you send it by media mail, it's a flat rate of $2.75. That's not bad. No, not at all. Um... So we've got Super Mario Maker for the Wii U. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So this is actually a really good rank. It's uh, below 2000. So it's a really good rank in video games. And even though it's a used game, for a used copy, we're still gonna profit $14.16 on FBA. So again, just sticking it in a box, shipping it out, no extra work involved. And we're not talking about making a living here, but we're talking about if you're downsizing anyway, if you have a tendency toward min minimalism, if you are looking to just, you know, get rid of the clutter around your house, why not sell it off in a way that makes a little bit of side cash and make turn that into profit, turn the clutter into profit. Jeopardy for Wii U. Used copy is going to bring us $16 worth of profit. Again, you can't put this in, I mean, this wouldn't sell in the garage sale for 16 bucks, but the power of Amazon, you know, there are people all over the world that want this stuff, so 
you get a premium price for your items, even even if they're used. What do you think you'd get for that at GameStop in store credit or cash? Uh, they might want you to pay them if you trade it in, but no, seriously, maybe maybe two bucks. Yeah, not much. Um, so yeah, not much at all. And then this one, Zumba Fitness World Party for Wii U. I'm not surprised to see that the exercise video game did not get opened. I, I decided I didn't feel like doing Zumba, so not quite as good a rank. But I mean, it's it's new, so we're gonna be able to sell it as a new product. Uh, we'll probably make like six bucks off this, which again, wouldn't be able to trade it in for that kind of value. So six, 22, uh, 32, 36. Mm, what did I say on this? And obviously, if you don't have an Amazon FBA account and you're not selling things on Amazon, you know, you don't have to do that just to be able to make a profit, you know, or to turn some kind of clutter into uh, cash. You know, you could sell things on Facebook Marketplace. Some areas, Craigslist is still doing well. There's Mercari, there's LetGo, there's OfferUp. You know, there's all kinds of different options yeah, for selling things. Uh, nowadays if you have game systems or old cell phones that you don't use anymore the trade-in value is usually pretty terrible in the store download the declutter app uh, so uh, declutter is, is a really great service you can, um, and then they actually have really good prices on cell phones uh, they actually are offering me 400 bucks for my phone as it is right now and I've had it for a little while now uh, so basically we took these four items and instead of putting them out here for a dollar or two a piece in our garage sale, this is gonna be like 45 bucks. And the only work we have to do is create the listing and stick them in a box with the rest of the things I'm shipping to FBA anyway. Okay, here's a little mid video question for you guys. What is the most money that you've ever made selling something at a yard sale or like on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, something like that? If you're, even if you're not a reseller you know, by trade or, or whatever, just what's the most you've ever sold something for, you know, that you were really super proud of? Um, about downsizing is if you pay a little bit of attention to the things that you find that you're going through while you downsize and look some things up, you know, you, you're going to find some unexpected value. We were setting things out for a garage sale, so we were going to be putting things out for a buck or two. But we just had to take a look at a, a couple of things, just a second look, because we were just curious about values and we actually got a pretty big surprise. So I found just a few items here that I wanna go over, talk about what the values actually are. And these are based on actual sold listings within the last week or so on eBay, primarily, uh, since you know majority are used items, uh, typically stick to eBay for that stuff. Uh, but this will just show the kind of value you can leave behind if you're not careful but you also wouldn't find without the downsizing and uh going through your things so we we got to find some value that we didn't know we had by doing the downsizing and then by taking a second look at the items we made sure that we didn't do ourselves a disservice by selling them for too little so the first item uh, that i have is actually a little dice game phase 10 uh, which is a great card game this is a little dice version of it in a in a little tin uh, this is about 15 years old or so, but uh, it's actually fully complete. We have the instructions and everything inside. Uh, we have the full notepad, which is usually the thing that's missing. We we didn't use the notepad somehow. I don't know how we managed that. Uh, but I was going to sell this for a couple of bucks. I thought that would be you know enough to make us happy. But then I took a look at it, and on eBay there are used copies of this exact game with the exact tin pre-owned condition so we're not talking about new in the box uh, for 25 to 30 bucks so it's a huge value that we didn't know we had and we would have undersold it we would have sold ourselves short but just took an extra minute to see what we had and you know found a lot of extra profit that's awesome uh, the next thing we have is actually something that uh, that my dad gave to us it's a set of four plates they're uh, green apple is the color there are two salad plates and two dinner plates, and they're from uh, the Rachel Ray Double Ridge plate collection. Uh, we've never used them. They've sat in the garage for months, and at one point they were actually in the vehicle on their way to a donation. Uh, they would have been given away for nothing, the place we made the donation to, so they really didn't need that kind of stuff. So we took them back home one more time, 
they braved another country road and didn't break somehow. Uh, they're still in great condition. They've never been uh, used. They've never been washed or, or eaten off of. And I was going to put this out for five bucks for the set. It's just dinner service for two people. Uh, but again, took a deeper dive, scanned the label, you know. You got things that you're downsizing and they got a barcode, it never hurts to scan. That's the best thing about, you know, items that still have the barcode. You can always check it out. Um, then you don't have to know exactly what you're dealing with. You can kind of scan and go. And these are going for 30 plus dollars, this four piece set. This remote in used condition is selling all day long at 30 bucks. In the package, it's more like 45 to 50. Unfortunately, I don't have our original box, but I'll settle for 30 bucks for a Xbox remote I was gonna get a dollar out of at the garage sale. This is actually a pretty big one. I had no idea about this value, but this just kind of shows you how something's a little bit different. Take a second look. So what we have here is a gold colored Wiimote uh, from Legend of Zelda, limited edition Wiimote. Uh, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, doesn't really have anywhere to speak of. Uh, battery compartment again is one of the number one priorities whenever you're dealing with electronics nice and clean there So uh, took a look at this on eBay and sold listings for used condition uh, And items have sold within the last two days uh, These are going for between 45 and 50 bucks used for Wiimote the rest of them We had out there for like two dollars a piece or a dollar a piece This was gonna go right in there with them, but since it was a little bit different since it was eye-catching and uh, you know, had the the uh, Zelda uh, logo here. You know, just wanted to give it a second look, and we're very glad that we did because it's a ton of value that we would have missed out on otherwise. What else do we have here? So we got a little Nikon Coolpix digital camera. So I took a look at this. This is actually an L28 is the model on this Nikon Coolpix, and used. These are going for again forty-five to fifty dollars. Um, the last one, I got to be a little more careful pulling over here. Uh, so this was actually something that my dad gave us as well. It's been a while back. I think it was before last, or just after last Christmas. That's so kind of awkward timing. Uh, so this big guy is a Thomas Picconi 14-inch Santa, blown glass style. Um, you can see, actually, he's got his serial number and everything and his authenticity on the bottom. So I went ahead and took a look at this guy and found some sold listings. I'd be looking at getting 55 to 70 for just the Santa itself. So again, an item that we didn't spend money on, an item that was going to go out in our garage sale for a fraction of that cost. And all it took was a second look doing a little more digging, you know, making sure that any unique items that we found along the way or items that we could scan easily, we just take the second look at things. And those six items would have probably gone for one to two to three dollars each in our garage sale. Instead of that, those six or those handful of items are actually going to net us after all fees and everything close to two hundred bucks. So another item that's really good to sell are items off of your couponing stockpile. Take a look at Facebook Marketplace and see if uh, there are other sellers around you, other couponers. That's a really easy way to tell is if you see a lot of people selling items like Tide and Pantene and different bundles and things like that. Um, you have to keep in mind that you want to sell items at, you know, significantly cheaper than they could be bought at the store. Otherwise, they, you know, people won't bother driving out to meet you or driving to your house to pick them up. Um, although one thing I will note is that Tide, for whatever reason, um, you know, not, not any laundry products, but specifically Tide, will sell for close to what it sells for in the store, just so people can get a small discount on it. I don't understand it, um, but it, it seems to sell really well. So look out for another video from us on that. I think I'll do a longer version if you guys think that would be helpful on um, how to make money from selling items off your stockpile, specifically Tide and things like that, because we've made a considerable amount um, just selling bundles of Tide Pods and Tide Liquid and things like that. Um, but one thing that you can do, you know, don't sell individual items like shampoo and conditioner, you know, by themselves. Try to bundle them up so people are getting, uh, you know, a lot for their money. I like to do a cleaning bundle, which is just um, some laundry detergent, uh, maybe some Clorox wipes, some spick and span or something like that. 
um, you know, just four or five different items for like 20 bucks or 15 bucks, whatever, you know. I price out generally what you can get them for at the store and then I lower it. Um, but yeah, that's a really good way to, uh, if it's something that you're not going to use or that you have an abundance of from your couponing, uh, that you can make a little extra money on the side as well. So another thing to talk about is what to do once you start accumulating a death pile. Now, if you haven't done that before, if you're not familiar with that and it sounds like something ominous, don't worry. It's just a term that resellers use for that pile of things that moves off to the side. You bought it on dollar day and you're definitely going to flip it, but you never get around to flipping it because you do your normal sourcing and just forget about that, that item that you toss to the side. It happens to all of us. Uh, so there are a couple of things you can do to tackle a death pile. Uh, the first thing is just give yourself a minimum number of listings that you have to pull from the death pile uh, every week or every day before you get started on any other sourcing, before you get started on any other projects business related. Uh, just, just going through five things a day or six things a day will really cut that pile down quickly. Uh, another great option is liquidating. Uh, that's really good for somebody in a position similar to mine. Uh, so like I said, I'm changing focuses, but I have a ton of consumer goods from when I started, a ton of eBay type items. And, you know, I can't really FBA them because they're not in brand new condition or because they're collectibles and things like that. So instead of that, since FBA is not an option for me, I can't just put them in a box and sell them to Amazon. Uh, I just batch everything up into one big lot and put it up as a resale bundle. Uh, make sure that I'm giving the buyer plenty of value. We're actually going to put up a screenshot of the resale bundle that I have currently listed for sale. And you can actually see the breakdown is less than a dollar per item that, the re that whoever buys from me would pay. So, you know... Give yourself a minimum number of listings that you have to do before you can go out and do your sourcing because the, the sourcing in the field is the fun part, right? We all want to do that. So if you commit that you're going to make a certain number of listings from your death pile before you allow yourself to go out and do the fun thing in the field, that's going to give you motivation to keep doing it every day because we all want to go out in the field and pick stuff and show off our finds. Uh, and then... You know, once you've whittled it down enough, then you can bundle things together, give somebody else a great deal. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please uh, hit the like button, share, and make sure that you subscribe for more tips and tricks to thriving on a budget. After all, we all like to save money, make money, and dream big. Thanks, guys. Bye. Shut up and sit down.